Welcome to the lecture 28 where we will be talking about flexural or bending vibration in B. In the last few lectures we have talked about axial or longitudinal vibration in a bar or rod and now we will move into slightly more complex form of vibration which is bending or flexural vibration. So, as we did earlier, we are going to start with the equation of motion of a beam. So, here we will consider Euler Bernoulli beam. So, let me just try to draw a, an Euler Bernoulli beam under deformation. So, this is an Euler Bonnoli beam undergoing a transverse deformation which is y x comma t. So, y x comma t is the transverse displacement at any spatial or lengthwise dimension x and q x t is the spatially distributed force per unit length. So, this is q x t is externally applied load ok per uh, length. So, q x t could be any applied load. So, it can have any possible variation in along the length of the beam that is along x. Now, so, y x t is the transverse deformation and the x axis shows the length of the beam. So, we are considering the basic Euler Bernoulli beam which is also called as the engineering beam formulation. So, Euler Bernoulli beam. So, we all know the assumptions of an Euler Bernoulli beam, I am not going to go into that because that is a part of your basic engineering mechanics or structural mechanics. Now, what we are trying to do is we are trying to find out the equation of motion. So, first and foremost that we need to do to find out the equation of motion is to draw the free body diagram. So, let me take a small elemental portion of the beam of length dx. 
So, if I take this small elemental part of the beam of length d x and and draw the forces that are acting on the beam, then the forces are going to be of course, the externally applied force. q x t, then the internal moments if I call this as m x t on the left hand side, then the moment on the right hand side is m x comma t plus del m by del x d x. Apart from the moment, the other force that is going to act is the shear force. So, let me call this as q x comma t. On the right hand side, it is going to be q x comma t plus del q by del x into t x. So, apart from all the static forces that are going to uh, other forces that is coming from static equilibrium, there is going to be another inertial force which is going to oppose the motion of the body. So, similar to all other examples that we have dealt with, uh, inertial force is also going to act in this direction which is going to be m x d x into y double dot x comma t. Now, if I write down the force equilibrium, let us see what is going to be the force balance equation. The force balance is going to be If I simplify this, I can write this as del q del x So, I can cancel out d x on both sides. So, if I can remove them, then my equation becomes neater and I have this as the equation and let me call this as equation 1. So, if this is equation that is coming from force balance, what we should do next is to get the moment balance equation. So, let me get the moment balance equation. So, if I write down the moment balance equation, I have
ok. So, please note that I have taken the moment for all the forces that are acting on the uh, elemental portion of the beam. Uh, so, I have taken the moment about the left hand side uh, uh, portion of the beam. So, I have please note that I have not considered the moment because of the inertial force. This is an assumption of the Euler Bernoulli beam where the moment component of the inertial force is actually not taken into account and also the rotary inertia. The inertia because of the rotation angle is not taken into account. So, if we try to simplify this, we will get the equation as del m by del x d x plus q x t. Now, what we do is that we neglect the term associated with the d x square, because d x itself is a small number. So, d x square is going to be even smaller. So, we are going to remove this part. So, then and of course, d x is going to get cancelled. So, I have d m del m by del x plus q x comma t is equal to so, this is my second equation that I will need. Okay. So, let me write down the first equation which was rewrite it here which was del q by del x plus q x comma t is equal to m x. So, this is my second equation, this was my first equation. So, what I do is that in place of q x t, I replace uh, uh, del 2 m by del x square. So, del q x, so what I do is that I write del q by del x as minus del 2 m by del x square plus q x t. Now, we all know that for an Euler Bernoulli beam, the moment m can always be written as E i x that is the flexural rigidity which we have considered to be varying with x for generic uh, uh, condition and into del 2 y by del x square. So, if I substitute this into this equation, then I get minus del 2 by del x square into E i x into del 2 y del x square plus q Now, what I do is that I will simply take this on right hand side. So, my final equation of motion is So, this becomes the equation of motion. So, this is the equation of motion that we have for a generic beam with all possible generality.
the mass can vary with x, the flexural rigidity the uh, can vary with x. So, we have this final form of equation of motion. So, now my our next job obviously is going to solve this. So, for solution let us first consider a free vibration problem. So, if we consider a free vibration problem, my q x t is going to go to 0, then I will have this equation as this is my equation of motion for free vibration. Now, let ha we have to solve this, we have to solve this in order to get the displacement y x t as a function of x and time. So, we can see similar to our previous case of axial vibration in the rod, we all here also we have a partial differential equation in x and time and our job is to solve this. So, the best way to solve is to solve this problem under normal mode of vibration. We did exactly similar thing for the axial vibration in a bar, we are going to extend the same technique to the, uh, to the flexural vibration in a beam. So, if we try to do this, we what we have to do? We have to say that under normal mode of vibration, this is just a repetition because we have solved a similar problem several times earlier. We say that under normal mode of vibration, the shape of deformation. is unchanged with time. Which is also called as synchronous motion. Okay. So, how do we say that? So, suppose this is a fixed free beam. So, suppose this is the deformation at t equals to t 1, we can say that at t equals to t 2, the deformation is of course, going to change, but the shape of deformation is not going to change. Okay. So, at t equals to t 3, it might be like this. Okay. And we have seen earlier that this undeformed shape is the mode shape of the system under that normal mode of vibration. So, this I can also draw it in this form. So, suppose this is the deformed shape I at t equals to t 1, the deformed shape at t equals to t 2. this is at t equals to t 2. Okay. The overall displacement is changing, but the shape of the displacement, the shape of deformation is not changing with time. So, now to express whatever we have said in terms of uh, mathematical expression, we can say that the ratio of y x 1 at any t y y of x 2 at 10 t should not be a function of time, right. So, or should be a constant, right. So, my displacement at, at a certain x 1 
by the displacement at a certain other x2, this two ratio is going to remain constant whatever be the time or this ratio should not be a function of time. So, how do we achieve this? So, under normal mode of vibration, I, I should mention that this is happening only under normal mode So, how do we mathematically capture this? We can say that if I can write y x t as separate variable separable form that is I can if I can write this as product of a space function and a time function then this condition is getting satisfied. So, what I do is that I write y x t as phi x and t t. Okay. So, if I write y x t as phi x and t t, then this condition of synchronous motion is getting satisfied. So, my job now is to find out phi x, which of course, is going to be the mode shape under that normal mode, because phi x is the undeformed, un, uh, undeform, I mean unchanged deformation of the uh, beam vibrating under that normal mode of vibration. So, if I try to do this, what I am going to do is that plug this expression into my equation of motion. So, equation of motion is If I plug this in here, what do I get? I get m x phi x Now, what do I do? I write them as Now, what I see? So, that the left hand side is a function of x, purely a function of x. The right hand side is purely a function of time and both of them are equal to each other. This is possible only when each of this is equal to a constant. So, let me call that constant to be minus omega square. We know that this omega is the natural frequency of the system, because t double dot t by t is minus omega square. Now, if this is the case, let us try to solve this equation. So, if I try to solve this equation, I have Now, we what we do is that this is an ordinary differential equation of fourth order and we need to solve this to get the value of phi. This is what we need to do phi x. Now, it is difficult to solve this equation analytically if e i 
and m is varying with x. So, in order to solve this equation analytically and to simplify the equation, we assume uniform cross section. So, that m is not a function of x and E i x is also not a function of x or m x can be said as m, E i can be said as E i. If I do so, then what do I have? I have simplified equation, I have E i So, this can further be written as So, what I do is that I write this whole thing as beta to the power 4. So, beta 4 is if I do so then I have d 4 phi by d x 4 minus So, what is the solution of this expression? The solution if I solve this phi x is going to be C 1 sin beta x So, this is the solution of the equation. So, this is the generic solution of mode shape of an Euler Bernoulli beam. So, C 1, C 2, C 3 and C 4 are unknown as well as beta which is a function of omega is also is also unknown. So, our job is to know this two set of unknown variables. So, b, if I know beta, I will be able to get omega which will be the natural frequency and if I can get C 1, C 2, C 3 and C 4, I can get the mode shape which is going to um, help us to find out the modal parameter that are the mode shapes and natural frequencies. Now, we are going to if we recollect what we did in for uh, axial vibration of a bar, the uh, unknown C 1 and C 2 was found from the boundary condition. So, we will be doing exactly the same thing here. We will use the boundary condition to evaluate C 1, C 2, C 3 and C 4 and also beta. So, we will do that in the next lecture. Thank you.